In this video, we're going to start to see how to arrange our working space. Also, in this case, the way that we decide to set it up depends entirely on us. We can decide to go minimal and just work on a table with the materials and the tools that we have seen so far. Or we can decide to go a little bit further buying or building some equipment that will allow us to work in a more comfortable way. At the end, what we need is a place where we can keep all our painting stuff. An easel where we put our support while we work it. A place where we can store all our painting equipment. Some light to clearly see what we are doing. And some space where we can work. This last one can be permanent, like for example a room, or just a part of it that we can use as studio, or it can be an area of our house that we use for painting and that we clear at the end. Here we're going to talk about easels. In particular, we're going to discuss why we should have at least one. We're going to see its basic anatomy, the materials normally used to make them, what types we can find on the market, trying to point out features, pro and cons for each one of them. We're going to establish some criteria that we should keep in mind when we choose them. And at the end, we're going to see how to solve some problem while we use them and some alternative in case we don't want to get one. The main task that we want to achieve with an easel is to put the support that we want to paint right in front of us vertically, placing it in a position where we can work easily, seeing correctly what we are doing. The reason why we want this is to have a correct view of what we are painting without the perspective problems that we have if we work on our support horizontally, for example, on a table. It also brings all the support areas closer to us. Although this is a problem that we have more on large supports, it's still better to paint vertically also on a small one. It's also a good habit to watch the work we are doing also from a certain distance to check if it looks good also from there to make sure that all the proportions are exactly like they should be. On the market, we can find many models, and it's not easy to define a common anatomy for all of them. So here we're going to see, by the theoretical point of view, what parts somehow they all have and what they do. The first part is the base that holds the support and its weight. Then we have one or more beams on the back that doesn't allow our support to flip and fall. We have the top that normally somehow slides and fix the support to what we are going to call the holding structure. The structure is in some way connected to the easel base. On the easel base, normally we have a rotation system that somehow allows the holding structure to more or less rotate, and sometimes we also have a sliding system to move it up and down. What we have seen now by the theoretical point of view, it's carried out by the manufacturers in different ways and with different materials. The most used material by far is the solid wood. A lot of companies use peach. Frequently, we can find them made in elm and sometimes in oak or pine. But we can also find them in aluminium or brass. According with the size and the type of the structure, we can divide them in five categories. The smallest made for supports not taller than 50-60 cm, it's what we will call the table easel. It's a folding easel made to be placed on a table. Normally the base can rotate from 0 to 90 degrees. It should also slide, although the sliding system is a little bit tricky. If we fold it, we can easily hide it. This type of easel should be set before we start, and since it's made for small supports, we should be able to complete our painting without changes. One of its alternatives is what they call the field easel. 
it has a very light structure that can be folded down and reduce it in a very small volume to make it easy to transport. The base normally is made with two adjustable brackets that come out from the front legs. The easel base is composed by three extendable legs that sliding allow us to set it horizontal also on uneven ground. The setting system is pretty tricky since every part must be adjusted separately, but it's definitely very flexible and allow us to use it outside as well as home. If we decide to get one, for our paintings we should use canvases or light supports not taller than 60 cm. If the support is too heavy, it becomes pretty unstable. Another type bigger is what we will call the exhibition easel. It's foldable and pretty stable. According with the size, it can be used with supports up to 120cm tall and sometimes even more. The base can be fixed or adjustable with screws, but in any case the height must be set before we put our support on it. It's not really easy to adjust it once the painting is on. This makes this type of easel precisely indicated for exhibitions. In this case, we're going to put it there and we won't touch it until the exhibition is over. I've seen this type used with advertising blackboards out of the shops many times, but we can use it quite easily also for painting. The next type is what we call the sliding and folding easel. It has a nice system that allows the all this structure to slide up and down very easily, even with a large painting on it. As the one we have seen before, it's easily foldable, and since it's pretty light, we can easily move it and hide it. We can use it with a support up to 120 centimeters and sometimes even taller. The angle is adjustable in a range of 10 to 20 degrees. If we use it with large supports that normally are quite heavy, it's not really stable. If you want something more stable, we have to choose a different type that it's called the studio easel. They normally have a nice base, somehow foldable, but more for transportation issue than storing. They are pretty solid and heavy and most of the time they have wheels that allow us to move them from one place to another. We can find them in different sizes, starting from the small, capable to hold a painting up to 100-120 cm tall, to right to the very big like this one, that it's more than 80 kg heavy, and it can support a canvas up to 2.5 meters tall. These types normally give us the maximum flexibility on how we want to position the painting. They have a nice sliding and rotation system. These features that are not really useful with small supports become very important with canvases over 100 cm tall, because they allow us to work on the same level from the bottom up to the top of the painting. In fact, while horizontally we can position ourselves easily from left to right of our canvas, vertically if the painting can't slide up and down, we have to do it, and this isn't really comfortable. We have to consider that our target is to set a working space up that allows us to focus more on the painting than on how to find the position to do it. With the sliding and folding easel, as well as the studio easel, we can easily and comfortably use supports from 30 cm up to 120 cm tall. This makes these types uh, the best choice if we like both small and large supports. My suggestion, if we don't know exactly what size of support we are going to use, is to get one of these two. If we have an area that we can use only for painting, 
we should get the studio easel. Otherwise, the sliding and folding one that quite easily we can hide once we have finished our work. To establish some criteria that we should keep in mind when we go to choose our easel, the first thing that we have to consider is if we have or not an area to dedicate exclusively for painting. The second thing is what size of support we would like to work on. I will definitely not choose the exhibition easel. We want something more flexible and easy to use. And unless we plan to go painting outdoor, I wouldn't also consider the field easel because it's complicated and pretty unstable. If we have the room to set the permanent painting area, we can actually choose one of the three remaining, although the studio easel is probably the best choice. If we don't have the space, we should avoid the studio one and go for the sliding and folding easel or the table one. And if our target is only to follow this course, the best option is the table one. There are a few things that we have to consider when we use them. The first is that when we go to paint close to the bottom of the canvas that is in contact with the base of our easel, it's better if we put below the canvas a piece of wood that allows us to pull the bottom corner up. In this way, it gets easier to work in this area. Another thing that we have to consider is that while we are painting, many times we will move and sometimes rotate the support. So, I don't normally use the top to fix the canvas to the base. In this case, it becomes pretty unstable, and if we are not careful, it may flip and eventually fall off. To avoid this, we can use a plywood panel that we're going to put behind the support and fix it with the top to the base. Now that we know a little bit more about easels, if we still decide that we don't want to get one, in alternative, we can hang our support on a wall and go to paint there, or we can also put it on a furniture close to the wall. In these cases, we have to be careful to don't paint the wall as well. And with this last suggestion, we have concluded our discussion on the easels. If you enjoyed this video, we will really appreciate if you could click on like and subscribe to our channel. It will also help us very much if you could leave a comment. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.